It's this 43-page report, this report that we paid who knows how much money to study a plastics tax, actually treated the idea seriously. It's an insane idea, which is pretty much evident when you read the report, because plastics are so ubiquitous, it really is like taxing air, like taxing carbon. Um, and look at this here. Uh, this is a chart from the report. It shows, look at all the amount of plastics, packaging, construction. I sort of forgot about how much plastic is in construction. Automotives, that's a, that's a big user of it. Electronics, of course. It really would be like taxing air. And the idea of recycling all these plastics is nuts, too. And the report specifically says that. Can I read you a paragraph from the report? I know I'm quoting from the Book of Crazy here, but that shouty cult leader demanded a report on taxing plastic and forcing people to recycle plastic. Even though plastic is harmless, it's not toxic, it's not poisonous, it's fine. Um, we, we lick it, we eat plastic cutlery and plastic plates. But here, let me just quote for, for a paragraph from this report of crazy. Uh, let me quote. Plastic collected but discarded. In the automotive and white goods sector, e.g. large appliances such as fridges or stoves, as well as small household appliances like a food processor, electric kettles. Those are called white goods. I didn't know that. The recycling of plastic is almost non-existent. Diversion rates are, however, very high. 100% for automotive. 64% for white goods. As products are collected for recycling, however, they are usually sent to a shredder where only the material of interest, generally the metal content, is sorted and sent to recyclers. It is indeed more cost-effective and less labor-intensive to crush and shred vehicles or appliances for metal recycling than to dismantle parts, including plastic parts. Now that's a little bit of sane talk in a report of crazy. You saw the chart though, plastics in our fridges, plastics in cars. It's a huge use of plastic and it is all diverted. It's not dumped in the landfill. You don't see cars in the landfill, do you? But even these reporters, or this, this research, they were clear. It takes so much effort and energy and manpower to recycle the plastic out of a fridge or a car. No one does it. You saw what they said. It doesn't make any sense because it would be insane to try. Or to put it in a way that you think an environmentalist might care about, it would take more energy, more resources to recycle it than you would save by recycling. It would take more resources to recycle a fridge or a car than would be than, than building a new one from scratch. That's why you have to subsidize recycling to get it done. It doesn't make sense, especially for things for which there is no shortage at all. There is no need to recycle paper. Trees are renewable. Trees are so cheap. It's so cheap to plant new ones and harvest new trees. It makes no sense to recycle paper. It, it takes more effort and energy and chemicals. And by the way, just throw paper in the, in the landfill. It's biodegradable. Just bury it. Same with plastic. It, it doesn't, you know, it's not biodegradable, but it's inert. It's not going to poison anybody. Why are you recycling plastic anyways? It's not harmful in any way. It's cheaper ecologically just to make new plastic. The only thing that makes any sense to recycle is metal, because metal is worth enough, which is why you don't need to pay people to do something so common sense in environmental. People will recycle metal and did long before the government came along because it's a lot cheaper to recycle metal than mine more metal from the center of the earth. That's an excerpt from the Ezra Levant show. Every day I do a video monologue and then I interview an interesting guest and then I end by reading my hate mail, but you've got to subscribe to it, which you can do at the rebel.media slash shows.